ready to be underway. Ramos and Cardani get the duel started. A great crowd on hand, of course, these two schools, these two campuses. Less than an hour and a half apart, uh, about 75 miles as the crow flies. Now, you can't drive as the crow flies, so it takes a little longer. Geographically very close. And uh, so there's a, a fair bit of orange and blue in the crowd to go with the old gold and black. Cardani in on a single. Ramos with a nice sprawl early, and he will try and fend off this shot. Better yet, get a stalemate there for the Boilermakers. So back to their feet, back to the center. Ramos, an Illinois native from Lockport, Illinois. As I said, Cardani. A local product from the Champaign Urbana Metro area. Cardani, a two time NCAA qualifier. Strong shot attempt there by Ramos. Great sprawl by Cardani, and they stand back up. Ramos has won 12 in a row. That includes victories over then top ranked Drake Ayala out at Iowa. Then second ranked Eric Barnett from Wisconsin. And Ramos, a nice step over there. He will get the takedown here. Two minutes into the first period. Did a nice job of burying the head and then stepping over the ankle. Now Ramos is looking for a cradle. Good job by Carney to Carnati. Cardi Good job by Cardani to slip his head out. Ramos with the mat return. Cardani back to his feet, closing in on 30 seconds of ride time. Another great hips first mat return there by Ramos here on the edge. Now Ramos tight waist with his right hand looking for Working on a chicken wing. Now he will abandon that and go for the suicide roll tilt. He's getting a count. There's a three and a three count for Ramos. So that is three back points. Ramos now leads 6 nothing here after one. Good first period. Ramos' choice to start, and he will defer. Cardani looks to his bench and selects bottom. You see uh, Matt Ramos, he's, he's closing in on some history. He's got one of the best winning percentages currently in program history. And those are serious names he is on that list with. National champion Charles Jones. Two-time national runner-up Chris, Chris Flieger. And then Ramos. Cardani up and out quick, just about five seconds. So Ramos's ride time stops at 116. 6-1 here early in the second. A single attempt there from Cardani, but lightning quick reflexes. Reaction time there for Ramos. Ramos pushing the action forward. Cardani trying to free up his right arm, finally does. Ramos had it hemmed up near the shoulder. Now a blast double from Ramos for his second takedown of the match. Now leads 9-1. This is a duel both teams feel confident they can get. Matchups are favorable either way. So bonus points as always. Could be a huge determining factor. Ramos once again 
Two on one wrist, gets the turn, and this time it's a four count. So four back points for Matt Ramos. Runs his advantage to 13-1. 30 seconds now, 20 seconds left, and another turn for Ramos. There's a two count, three and four. He is holding a tech fall at the moment. And they will roll out of bounds. And there are the back points awarded. The tech fall is secured for Matt Ramos. Now 13 wins in a row. And he uh, plays up a little bit to the crowd. 17 won your final. A tech fall in favor of Purdue's Matt Ramos. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Not only is the takedown wiped off the board for Dustin Norris, but Madrigal was given credit for a takedown. Uh, they continued the action, took away the takedown from Norris, and then gave the takedown to Madrigal, who now leads 4-0 and has wiped away the riding time completely from Norris's advantage. So an interesting call there by the letter of the law, continuing to let them wrestle, allowed Madrigal to get a takedown rather than the reversal. And instead of restarting the action at neutral, they go with Madrigal in control. He is up 4-0. Norris's choice here to start the third. He will take bottom. And he will try to replicate what Madrigal did in the second period with a quick escape, followed by a takedown. Norris to his feet. Looking for the switch there, sit out, and now he gets the escape, 4-1. Riding, riding time advantage at 22 seconds. Magical 4-2 and two in Big Ten action. That includes a good win over Nico Rivera from Illinois. A ranked win over number 18, Tyler Wells from Minnesota. He's looking for his fifth Big Ten dual win. If he can take down Dustin Norris. Remember, Norris got a early stall warning in the first, so that is something also to bear in mind. Magical has a single, and Norris hips heavy. That Hold was going nowhere. They will be stood up and restart with 50.9 to go in this match. Stall warning on Magical this time, so one apiece, and he Goes for a shot attempt just as the stall warning is given. Now the Purdue bench is complaining about a fast takedown. They have not thrown a brick yet. Stalemate is given. Magical on top, 7-1. Purdue coach Tony Ursling going to hold on to his brick. And Magical will elect to release Norris. 7-2 now on the escape. Short time, Magical will stay away. Nice offensive shot there. Sometimes offense the best defense, a good decision for Magical, 7-2. His fifth Big Ten duel win of the season. That will certainly help his seating in College Park in a few weeks. Christian White, 10-5 on the year, 2-1 in dual action. One and one in Big Ten duels. Pacino, a redshirt sophomore for Illinois, is 11 and seven this season. Three and two in Big Ten duels. Stalemate on that. 
Both men leaning heavy. Pacino heavy on the collar tie, looks for a low single, but comes up empty. First shot attempt from Christian White. Good sprawl. Nothing gained. Ankle pick. And White able to slink his way out of it. Go to action for both wrestlers here early. Heavy collar tie from Pacino while White was controlling the opposite wrist. Big head snap there. Danny Pacino. Exerting his will. Pacino comes in, top 25 in the country. He's in deep, but White has not given up control just yet, under a minute to go here in the first. Good side ride there by Christian White trying to bury the head. And Get a stalemate as Pacini got in super deep on that shot attempt, but comes away empty. Pacino strung together a couple victories for the fighting Illini. Took down Felix Latini from Wisconsin via tech fall last week. Also got a nice win over 20th ranked Vance Von Barr from Minnesota. Had a stall warning there against Christian White. These two have faced off earlier this season. White and Pacino saw each other at Midlands back on December 29th. Pacino came out on top 17-6, a major decision. Christian White, one of the handful of Boilermakers who took part of the Midlands Championships. The Boilermakers did not send the whole team. Illinois did. And uh, for their efforts, they got five men on the podium, including Pacino, who finished fourth. Here we go again, Pacino in deep. White once again hanging on. And he will go over the top, trying to get his own leg. Now Christian White appears to be in pretty good shape. Minute and a half to go here in the second. And another stalemate. Pacino definitely the aggressor is White with a nice shot attempt to show activity. He's looking for wrist control. Now Pacino gets it free. Both men change levels down to their knees. Good single there, and this time Pacino will finish. No, oh, it's waved off. White with the wrist whizzer, and finally Pacini able to finish off the shot. Good stick to there for the young man for Illinois. He now leads 3 0 with 30 to go here in the second. Pacino will go to work on top.
Christian White working on short time, looking to get a point back. He sits out, looking for the switch, trying to break free, as he did to start this second period. And Pacino will get pulled out of bounds just as the buzzer sounds. So they come back to the center at neutral. And uh, we've got a, a stoppage here. I believe there may be a, well, they definitely have to reset the clock there as it was, second official was talking something over the, the official scores. Here's the quick restart, beautiful ankle pick by Puccino and he turns that into points immediately. Now leads 6-1. And uh, looking for a little catch and release maybe. We got 6-2 now. Puccino found something that he likes. These two quick takedowns, he thinks maybe he can run some points up on Christian White. White shows a low shot attempt. There's 49 seconds of ride time additionally. That same mid single from Danny Puccino. White goes up over top on the defense this time. And We'll stand back up. It's 6-2, want to wait to go here in the third. Riding time not a factor just yet. A nice slide by there from Puccino. And now he's got White in all sorts of trouble. A fast pin. Danny Puccino. Ran a nice combination to get a shot, and lo and behold, he found Christian White on his back. Pacino very, very opportunistic there, takes full advantage of that mistake by the Purdue wrestler, and he will take the fall. 9-5 now, the advantage for Illinois on the team score. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. He will try and ride out the second period. A good second period there by Harrier. Polanco will start this third period on bottom. Up to his feet, now Harrier sucks him back. Polanco goes with him, turns into Jake Harrier and gets his escape, 7-7. Seven, seven. Riding time not a factor. Polanco back to the middle. This match very well. Could come down to the next takedown. Both men know it. A little throw by attempt there by Harrier. Polanco back to his feet, looking for the collar tie. Harrier gives a glance up the clock, a minute to go here in regulation. Had a great second period. And finger to the eye there, inadvertent. Good stoppage by the official, making sure that Polanco was okay. No advantage gained. Polanco drops down, hits an outside single. And he's around behind for the takedown. 35 seconds to go, Marcos Polanco. Leads 10-7, and he will try and maintain this ride as long as he can. Drops down to the ankle, and he will take a five count here. 
Polanco, the stop there, and he will get hit with a stall warning, but 15 seconds to go. They come back to the middle. Harrier to his feet. Polanco stays tight on the waist and drops back down to a knee. And he will take a five count there for a stall warning, but a 10-8 victory for Marcos Polanco. His first Big Ten dual victory of the season. And just as I say that, the Boilermakers, instead of Blaze, they are going with Isaac Rubel. So Ike Rubel gets the call. We told you there might be some craziness with the lineups here, and we've seen the first late change for the Boilermakers. They go with Rubel. Rubel 12 and 4 on the year, 2 and 0 in Big Ten, or excuse me, in dual action. He's 1 and 0 in Big Ten dual action this season. And he gets the call here over Blaze. Rubel's got an ankle, and I'm quite frankly, I'm surprised they didn't get stopped for a potentially dangerous hold, but they come back to the middle at neutral. Rubel 12 and 4 for the Boilermakers. Redshirt freshman from Decatur, Indiana. Swallow, meanwhile, a true freshman out of Lockport. Lockport sounds familiar. It should. Lockport High School. Also the former home of Matt Ramos for the Boilermakers. Nice job by Swall. In behind Rubel, now dumps Rubel on his head. Ike Rubel stays with it. Keeps his wherewithal and has not given up a takedown yet. 105 to go here in the first. Good combination of moves there from Logan Swall, and a stalemate is won by Rubel. Scoreless back to the middle. Final bout of the first half here. Short intermission at the conclusion of this match. It's been a doozy. Promised you off the top it'd be a great duel, and it's 9-8 in favor of the Fighting Illini through four bouts. We've seen a fall. We've seen a tech fall. We've had a, for as much activity as we've had in some of these matches, that wasn't a boring first period, but it was a scoreless first period. Rubel starts the second on top. Swall stands up, sits his hips back into Rubel, who drops down now and will look for a mat return over on the edge. Interesting development there as Rubel looked like he might be giving up the escape, instead drops in on what was essentially a reshot out of bounds. Back to the middle. 
Swell much quicker to his feet this time. Now Rubel sinks his legs in and sinks his hips back down to the mat. And if he can break that right arm post from Swall, he might be on something with the power half. Instead, Swall goes out the back door, got Rubel up way too high. 43 seconds of ride time before the escape is given. Collar tie from Rubel, he drops down on a single. Now all the way down on an ankle. Swall has his forearms laced through Rubel's legs. And now Ike Rubel looking to drive Swall over for some neutral exposure. Or maybe he'll just settle for a takedown. Swall continues to hold great defensive position. And nearly turns Rubel into neutral exposure. They roll all the way through and right back to where they started. This time, Swall gets his legs a little bit more free. Now Rubel able to get leverage back. What a roll we've got here. Ten seconds remaining, and a stalemate is called. Great sequence for both wrestlers as they get back to their feet. Short time in the second. A little hand shuck there from Rubel, and that will do it. Through two. One nothing in favor of Logan Swall. Rubel will start the second period down. Swall covers. Mike Rubel sits back into Logan Swall. And Swall, <laughs> he showed his hands like he was trying to let Rubel escape. Finally does. Now Swall with a nice outside single. He's going to lift it, try to treetop it. Rubel, a great late defense there, gets Swa's right ankle, and now here we are, right back in this pretzel position. Both men rolling through with control. Ike Rubel steps over. He's got hips in and gets the first takedown of the match. Ike Rubel, a minute nine to go. He's got a leg hemmed up. He's got a hip, opposite hip turn. If he can get leverage, that's what he's working on. Because he's got... He's got Swaw's left leg laced up with his ankles underneath his body. You got a great look at it there. If he can try and use that leverage to turn, and instead they're going to get stopped on the edge for a stalemate. The Purdue bench is saying that's a turning position. The head official is saying he wasn't turning him. So. We're going to restart. Rubel in control. 40.5 left on the clock. Swall to his feet quickly. Rubel looking for a mat return. And he gets the first one. 10 seconds off the clock. 30 to go. Ike Rubel riding time up over a minute as well. And now they will run out of bounds. The Illinois bench looking for a stall warning on the run out. Letter of the law, they're probably correct. 23.1 to go. Three-point advantage for Rubel. Swall once again up to his feet. Now hits a, a roll. Rubel follows it. Riding time is locked. And Rubel with another big mat return. That gets some oohs and ahs from the home crowd. Ike Rubel off the bench for a big decision here. In the 147, 157 pound match, Ike Rubel with his 13th win of the year, his second Big Ten dual victory here during this campaign. And the Boilermakers go back on top of the team score 11 9.
Dundee, Michigan. Buell comes in 13 and nine on the season, four and three in Big Ten dual action, and he's got an early takedown here on Moore. Moore seven and 10, 0 and six in Big Ten action. Buell goes to work on top. Stony Buell looking for Big Ten win number five on the year. That is a, a monster number for Buell, who's just cracked the top 25. Excuse me, the top, the rankings. He's ranked 31st. He's been in and out for a lot of the season. Redshirt sophomore is Stony Buell. 10-9 victory over Blaine Brenner from Minnesota last time out. And he's got a quick count there. Three swipes for Buell for three quick back points. Buell with a couple ranked wins recently. A nice return and a good job fighting through that for Moore as he gets the escape. That could have been a lot more for Moore, but Buell fortunate there to just give up the one. Buell went for that big mat return trying to improve, kind of lost control of his man. And Chris Moore wisely gets the escape. Buell 51 seconds of riding time on top of the turn. A good first period for this Redshirt sophomore. Mentioned Buell with a couple ranked wins. He also took down Tyler Lillard from Indiana in a duel back in January 27th. After a flurry of action, both men now settling in under a minute to go here in the first. Head snap by Buell. Buell looking for Combination on the legs. They go out of bounds and onto the boards. Stall warning there against Moore as he fleeing the mat, according to the head official. So 23 seconds left in the first. Moore hit with the first stall of the match. Will be Moore's choice here in the second. He defers, so Buell will select down. Try and get his quick escape. Chris Moore wrestled at Midlands back in December, placed six for the Fighting Illini. Able to keep Stoney Buell down for all of five seconds there before Buell gets the escape. 7-1 now for the Boilermaker. Buell looking for underhooks. More a nice defensive shot. Good duck under there by Moore. Trying to take advantage of Buell being in hard on an underhook, but... Buell trails that move and ends up with front head control back to the middle. They will come after the stalemate on the edge.
Not a bad shot attempt by Moore. He didn't commit to it, though. Backed out on it before he'd even gotten to Buell's leg. Both coaching staffs extremely active in calling out instructions to their wrestlers. Good head snap there by Moore. 30 seconds to go here in the second. Heavy hands from Buell. Now 15 to go. Moore, nice outside single there. Buell trails it. Kept his feet moving as well, so he will try and fend off this late shot attempt. Chris Moore's best shot of the period goes begging. 7-1, Buell leads as we head to the third. Buell with 46 seconds of riding time. He will start the third period on top as Moore selects bottom. Quick to his feet. Buell looking for the mat return. Moore hits a roll right out of it and gets his escape. Sony Buell actually looked to his bench before that period started and said, should I cut him? Just give him the escape. Instead, he got six more seconds of riding time before giving up the escape. Now he's got a tight front headlock. And a stalemate called as Buell didn't do anything with it. Not a whole lot to do from there. More a quick shot on the whistle. Buell sprawls out of it. 7-2 advantage for the Boilermaker. And now he will get hit with a stall warning as well. So one either way. Here with a minute 15 to go. Another shot from Moore, another sprawl from Buell. And now Buell with a defensive run behind. He gets the, the okie doke takedown. 10 2 now, advantage for Buell as he is riding time. Gets to a minute. And the Illinois bench will, uh, well, somebody noticed it over there. One minute exactly of riding time. 10 3 after that escape. Buell, heavy hands. He gets in on his defensive hooks, does Stoney Buell, as Moore, again, the aggressor on the shot. It's very reminiscent, uh, if you're a Boilermaker wrestling fan, of Dylan Lighty's style. So Buell reminds me of more and more as we watch the Boilermakers this season. Lighty, of course. Spent the majority of his 2019-2020 senior season in the top five in the country. 10 seconds to go. Another nice trying to throw is Chris Moore. Inside trip attempt. He's throwing the kitchen sink. It's Tony Buell, and he's going to come up empty. That riding time, by the way. That gives Stoney Buell up to 11-3, and that is a major decision for the Boilermakers. Buell gets his fifth Big Ten dual win of the season. We talked about it off the top of the show, and here we are. We've reached 174 pounds. Ruth, eighth in the country. Bowman, number 32 this week on the Intermat wrestling rankings. Edmund Ruth, NCAA qualifier last year. After going 30 and eight, placing sixth at Big Tens. Ruth began his career at Lehigh before transferring to Champaign. Bowman, meanwhile, redshirt freshman for the Boilermakers. 11-10 in his first full season with the varsity side. 
two and five in Big Ten dual action. Good aggressive shot there from Bowman. Ruth changing levels early. Another nice head shuck from Bowman. Edmund Ruth, eighth in the country, fourth in the Big Ten, judging by the rankings with Carter Storacci on top of the list. Shane Griffith at Michigan, coming in third this week. Patrick Kennedy, who beat Ruth earlier this year in the Iowa-Illinois duel, and then Ruth in eighth. Interestingly, Kennedy was Ruth's one loss. His other loss this year actually came in the Missouri duel against Keegan O'Toole, the top-ranked undefeated 165-pounder for the Tigers, wrestled up to take on Ruth in that duel. Ruth hanging heavy on Bowman's neck here, 30 seconds to go. The Fighting Illini looking for their first team duel victory since November. And they need something big here from Edmund Ruth if that's going to happen. Ruth looking to hit something big after Bowman had a great shot. Now he follows it through. Bowman trying to get points on short time. Tozer in if he can get control on the edge. Five seconds to go. Ruth. Oh, Bowman just lost his toes. And we will get the Purdue bench calling for a stall. Warning on that Ruth dive out of bounds and the head official agrees. So a stall on Ruth, but no points given up in that scramble. It was a really good shot by Bowman that Edmund Ruth almost turned into a huge move for himself with a throw. Instead, no damage done. Ruth will select bottom after Bowman defers. Quick restart and lightning quick to his feet is Edmund Ruth. Just three seconds it took Ruth to get out from bottom to start the second here. A minute into the second. Ruth looking for a, an aggressive underhook. And there he gets it, gets the body lock, trying to drive. And there's the takedown given for Ruth as they roll out of bounds. So 4 nothing in favor of the Illini wrestler, Edmund Ruth. Looking for his 17th win of the year. Bit of a sloppy cover there, and Ruth will get called for the Caution is the front cover was a bit high. It was up on the bicep of Brody Bowman. Bowman up to his feet. Now he will sit back with his hips trying to get his wrists free. Edmund Ruth absolutely has 
Bowman clamped down the side ride. Bowman again trying to get up, but 174 pounds of Edmund Ruth hanging off the side of him, unable to keep his balance. And Bowman will run out of time here in the second. 4 nothing Ruth as we head to the third. Bowman will select and he will go neutral to start the third period. Three bouts to go after this. Purdue up 15-9. Illinois looking for bonus points out of their superstar. Ruth just driving forward once again, going for that body lock. Bowman is trying a side toss, a hip toss of his own, and he slips it out of bounds. Another takedown for Ruth over on the edge. 7-0 now. Ruth rides so, so good on top. Head coach Mike Poeta tells Ruth, I need you to ride for six seconds, get your riding time, and then cut him free. As Ruth wanted to, to start neutral. And there it is. He's got his riding time up over a minute. Gets the... Gives the escape to Bowman and is on him immediately. Brody Bowman over on the edge, dives back to Ruth's ankle and probably saved himself a stall call by doing that. And that's exactly what Coach Poeta is saying. saying. A bit of a chintzy call in his opinion. Bowman dives towards the ankle to, uh, to, not, to, to avoid the fleeing call and it looks like we got a bit of spot of blood on the mat, so still trying to hit something big for the Fighting Illini. There's double underhooks again. And Ruth with the Negative drop for the takedown. Did not get Bowman to his back like he was hoping for, but that is a powerful, powerful move. Great body control by Edmund Ruth. 10-1, now 10-2 after the Bowman escape. Riding time is now locked in favor of Ruth. Bowman shoots from his knees. As he dropped down, matching levels with Ruth. Edmund Ruth looking for the major decision. Brody Bowman a takedown away from wiping that off the board. Ruth in on a shot attempt, and that will come up empty, but he gets the major decision. Win number 17 on the year for Edmund Ruth. He improves to six and one in Big Ten dual action. against Connell. James Rowley, the redshirt freshman for the Boilermakers, transferred to Purdue from Wisconsin, where he spent last season. Dylan Connell, for the Fighting Illini, comes in four and eight on the year, one and four in Big Ten dual action. Qualified for NCAAs last season after going 18 and 18. Downright boring first minute through this match after what we just saw. 
between Bowman and Ruth. That was our featured meet of the match for a reason, and it lived up to the hype. Edmund Ruth, fantastic showing for the Fighting Illini. Brody Bowman, for his part, a couple nice counters, not too far away for Purdue, and gave up the, the major, but didn't give up anything more. Purdue still leads 15-13 on the team score. Rowley giving up a few inches of height here to Connell. Good action as both men glance at the clock to see how much time they've got here in the first. Rowley, six straight palms to the forehead, trying to knock his man a bit off kilter. Connell from Marengo, Illinois, Marion Central Catholic High School. Actually coached by Mike Poda in seventh and eighth grade. It was written in the stars all the way back in middle school. <laughs> Heavy hand fighting going on between these two here. For most of the first, it will be Connell selecting bottom to start the second. Connell a three-time state champion for Marion Catholic. Quick restart there from Rowley. Of course, if we're talking about uh, high school credentials and, you know, when you're dealing with freshmen and sophomores, that's a lot of what you have to do. No, uh, nobody can surpass James Rowley, four-time Oregon State champion in high school as he chases Connell all the way to the edge there before giving up the escape. Heavy hands again from Rowley, and Connor comes right back with his own collar tie. We are now four minutes into this match, one point scored. Very cautious wrestling from both men. Rowley, nice reshot after Connell comes up empty. He's in on a single with under 30 to go in the second. Ra uh, Connell with a great sprawl, meanwhile, and now Rowley in the defensive position. He's lost his hands. All Connell has to do is chase it around behind. Rowley hits a, tries to hit a roll at the perfect time and gives up the takedown with 10 seconds to go here in the second. Really nice job there by Dylan Connell. Rowley had the upper hand there, but Connell stayed in the fight. Comes up with the points, four nothing, headed to the third. Quick restart this time on Connell. So a caution either way. James Rowley up to his feet. Connell looking for the big mat return. Instead, 
Rowley with the switch for a two-point reversal as they go out of bounds. Rowley gets the two points on the, once again, Connell went for the big mat return and sort of lost control on the way back down to the mat. Not the first time we've seen somebody do that here tonight. Rowley with the optional start. Drops down to an ankle. Now maintains control that whole time. And finally gives the escape out of bounds. So riding time is virtually non-existent. One second in favor of Rowley. Rowley with a shot over on the edge. Out of bounds. 134 remain. 5-2 in favor of Connell. Heavy hands this time from Dylan Connell. Is there a minute and five seconds remaining? He's in the uh, catbird seat here. Rowley needs to chase points. Down three, minute to go. doing a nice job of controlling the pace here in the final minute of this action. Now less than 30 to go. Rowley pushing. He's got to get a takedown for the Boilermakers. On the edge, there's a stall call against Connell. His first as they go out of bounds into the scorer's table. 17.6 on the clock. Rowley going forward and Connell just perfectly fine with being on his backwards bicycle here. He gets hit for a stall point, 5-3. But Dylan Connell will secure the victory. 5-3 decision for the fighting Illini sophomore. His second Big Ten dual victory of the year. Improves to 5-8 this season. Vanadia 10 and 15 on the year, 6 and 8 in dual action. He's got two Big Ten wins, but a big takedown there for Pettigrew. From the jump, and we've got a stoppage. Does it look like Very limited varsity action before this year for Pettigrew, just 14 matches for the Fighting Illini coming into the season. Vanadia to his feet, gets his escape, 3-1. Now Vanadia in on a single and converts it. 4-3 Vanadia leads. Vanadia working on wiping out Pettigrew's riding time. Down to four seconds. There's a quick restart on bottom as Pettigrew trying to anticipate the whistle. And from uh, my vantage point, I can see exactly what they were working on on Ben Vanadia. His his right eye is all sorts of messed up. Heads must have come together in that action right off the whistle. Good control from Venadia on top as Pettigrew's made a flurry of motion to try and get up and is now busted right back down to the mat.
Pettigrew from Palatine, Illinois. Nadia riding very strong on top. As he approaches a minute of riding time. And now Venadia will get hit with a stall warning for not improving his own position, not trying to get any sort of advancement from his control. Good mat return, hips hit first. Vanadia with a side ride, but he's not working any sort of combinations. He's not interested in giving up the waist control. Now he does. 30 seconds to go. He's already been hit once with a stall warning from top. And they go out of bounds. Back to the middle. 20 seconds to go here in the first. Pettigrew to his feet, but Venadia busts him right back down to the mat again. 142 remaining, or excuse me, of riding time for Venadia. He is able to ride out the first period. Pettigrew with a takedown right from the jump. Venadia escape and a takedown of his own, and then he controls the rest of the first. Venadia will select bottom to start here in period number two. Venadia quickly to his feet. Pettigrew looking for the return. And Ben Venidia slips out of it, so an escape there for the Boilermaker. Now leads 5-3. Venidia again, a single on that taped up leg. Rosiah Pettigrew. Dale made his call after the sprawl. Pettigrew, a very strong, uh, very uh, lanky 197 pounder. And Venadia, nice reshot there, gets the takedown for the Boilermakers. 8 3 now in favor of the sophomore from Brexville, Ohio. Out of bounds they go. 83 with a riding time point pretty, secu pretty secure, not locked yet by any means. The Boilermaker bench is thinking bonus points. They trail by one on the team score with one bout to go. There's the escape for Pettigrew. Nadia fends off the shot attempt with an underhook. Defensively now lets it go, head snaps. Pettigrew down to the mat, 30 seconds left in the second. Pettigrew again on a shot and again, Venadia posts the head. Reaches for an ankle. Pettigrew does come up with an a, a, a single leg. Now switches it to a double. He gets a takedown of his own with seven seconds to go in the second. Pettigrew will finish the second period on top. 8-7 as we head to the third. And Pettigrew selects neutral.
Head snap by Venadia. Pettigrew again to his feet. Minute 30 remains. Venadia glances up at the clock. Pettigrew does as well. Solid tie from Pettigrew, Venadia. Now a minute to go, up one. Riding time is locked. Trying to power through the underhook was Venadia. Pettigrew slips out of it. Pettigrew with a nice double that he committed to now switches off to a single. Venadia looking to sprawl out of it. He's got a two-point advantage, so a three-point takedown wins this match for Pettigrew. And a stalemate is called. They'll come back to the middle, standing up. 22 seconds remaining. Pettigrew looking for his second Big Ten dual victory of the season. Again in on a double, this time a better sprawl for, for Venadia. But Pettigrew comes up with an ankle. He will try to treetop it with 10 seconds to go. Venadia slips out of it. They are back neutral. Five, four seconds now remain. And Ben Venadia will hang on to the decision. 9-7 with the riding time point. One of the Boilermakers honored earlier tonight, Peter Marinopoulos for the Fighting Illini. Marinopoulos 4-6 on the year, 0-6 in Big Ten duels. Filipovic 11-7 on the season. This is his first action in a duel match all season. Filipovic, my mistake, a sophomore out of Indianapolis. And Filipovic slips out. He limp on his way out of that Marinopolis shot and gets the takedown over on the edge. What better way for uh, the last Big Ten duel of the season to, than to come down to heavyweights, huh? 18-16 Purdue leads. Whichever team takes this match, takes this meet. And Maridopoulos able to get free. Maridopoulos pushing forward with the underhooks now. Filipovic flips it. He's got an underhook of his own, looking to shake it into a body lock. Out of bounds they go. Now one thing I will say, they're both qualified 197 pounders. Marinopoulos has been wrestling up for a few weeks now, so by the looks of things, he is slightly north of 197. Filipovic weighed in at 197 pounds today. Marinopoulos walking around at around two, 210, which is still very undersized for heavyweight, but the Illini started the season with Luke Luffman at 285, and he was lost midway through. Trying to throw by is Marinopoulos. Filipovic again squirms his way free, does not give up points. Maintains the three point three to one lead.
20 seconds remaining now in the first. Three one for Filipovich. Three one after one. This is the final duel of the season for the Boilermakers. Illinois has one remaining. They head to Evanston Sunday to take on Northwestern, a match that was actually scheduled for January 20th. Had to be rescheduled due to medical, internal medical concerns for the Northwestern side. So the Wildcats get a double header Sunday with Indiana and Illinois coming to town. The Fighting Illini get that in state rival to close out the season. Scoreless first 30 seconds here in the second. Excuse me. One point escape from Aaronopolis, so 3 2. Annapolis has had a couple very nice shot attempts. Filipovich has somehow been able to score him out of. And now Filipovich with an underhook. Purdue trying to close with their second dual win in the last three. Filipovich with a, comes in on a hard double. Marinopoulos able to sidestep it. Now Filipovich drops down to a single leg and he's got a, an ankle to try and treetop. Over on the edge and runs out of time. Does Filipovich, so no points there on the edge. He maintains his 3-2 advantage. Filipovich will start the third on bottom. Caution on Marinopoulos there. A little bit eager to get this match restarted. Two minutes remaining. Filipovich. Gets to his feet, now quad potting up and gets his escape, 4-2. Filipovich in on a single. Marinopoulos dives for the opposite ankle. That is a very awkward angle Filipovich's knee is at. I'm surprised that hasn't been called for a potentially dangerous hold yet. No points awarded. My goodness. That leg is going all sorts of sideways. Somehow Filipovich gets out of it. He looks like Gumby out there. And we will get a stoppage for a stalemate. 4-2, a minute five remaining. Marinopoulos down to a minute left. In on a single. Now he will try and treetop. It gets the trip, and there's the takedown. It's 5-4 in favor of Marinopoulos as Filipovich hits a roll out of bounds that would have been points had they not been out of bounds. 45 seconds remaining. Marinopoulos finally gets a shot to pay off for his first takedown of the match. Caution on a quick restart there from Marinopoulos. 
45 seconds remaining. Filipovic once again to his feet. He's got to get an escape here. Riding time not a factor. Marinopoulos can ride this thing out to win, and he doesn't. There's the escape for Filipovic. Hayden Filipovic with underhooks, pushing the action forward. Marinopoulos trying to hang in. 5-5, head shot for Marinopoulos, can't get around. Filipovic dives for a shot. Reshot from Marinopoulos, and he will get the takedown with 15 seconds to go. An ill-advised shot there from Filipovic, and a great reshot there. Both men got a quick breather. Now there's 9.8 seconds left. Marinopoulos cuts Filipovic free for the escape. It's 8-6, and all he's got to do is not get taken down. Peter Marinopoulos hit with a stall warning but it matters little as he secures the dual victory for his fighting Illini. Peter Marinopoulos, the 8-6 decision with the late takedown in the third period. Three big points in the fighting Illini win, 19-18 on the team score. We take a look at a couple sequences from this match. A good victory for Peter Marinopoulos his first dual victory of the season, first Big Ten victory of the season, and the Fighting Illini get their first Big Ten dual victory since February 3rd of last year when they beat Michigan State. They take down the Boilermakers here and will look to close the season on a two-meet win streak.